Shall I start? Yes, yes. Good evening. Good morning, all of you. I will first introduce IIU, the International Internship University, shortly called as IIU, as a global organization. It is the conventional education system by cutting down the additional cost and providing access to numerous courses and internships. Many students lack the opportunity of quality education when they opt for skill and learning based venture. IIU provides the perfect opportunity for those students who want to pursue their studies and want to research in the field of technology and science. I, Dr. Sudhakar Rumai, take the privilege to be a trainer and resource person for the training session by the training, learning and development department of the International Internship University, IIU. I am Dr. Sudhakar Rumai, retired head and associate professor, mechanical engineering department, Sardar Patel College of Engineering, Mumbai, India. I have 35 years of teaching experience in engineering colleges. Uh, shall I uh, upload uh, my screen? Yes, you can, you can. My screen is visible? Uh, yes, you can put a full screen. Is it full screen? Great, great, Professor. Okay. So, today's topic is automotive engine emission and innovative techniques to control it. Professor, we don't hear you. Professor, Dr. Sudhakar. Dr. Sudhakar. Uh, I think we lost professor, so we will wait him. I think internet connection. Let's be patient. I hope Professor will come back soon. Professor Sudhakar has a great uh, topic today, but we lost him, lost the connection, so uh, we will wait him. I hope that he will come back soon.
<clears throat> uh, he's still not coming back. I hope he has a problem, network problem. So let's wait a little more for him to, if he come back. Professor, professor, you come back, you hear us. Okay, uh, be, uh, because of heavy rain, uh, there is a problem in internet. Oh, so yes. sc screen is visible. Uh, we see uh, you and the background. Can you share again the presentation? Can you share our presentation? Uh, so there is a disabled uh, participant screen sharing. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, okay. Shall I start? Mm, yes, yes, you can. Okay. okay. Uh, Welcome all to my today's lecture on automotive engine emissions and innovative techniques to control it. I have chosen this topic because the emission is a hot issue today. During engine design, we discuss engine performance and reliability of the engine. But engine emissions problems are more significant than others today. I will cover recent developments in regulation to limit diesel emissions, engine technologies, carbon monoxide, NOx, and particulate matters generations. Engine technology is making very impressive progress with clean combustion strategies in active development. NOx control is focused in my lecture. There is a necessity for light duty engine development fuel economy requirements, advanced fuel, tech, advanced fuel injection technology developments, EGR control, advanced and multi-stages turbocharging, advanced diesel engine manufacturing, and advanced combustion techniques are all essential emission points of view. More attention is required to reduce emissions while boosting fuel economy and enhancing powertrain performance. My topic will focus on engine design and development, fuel injection and combustion technologies that challenges for pollution reduction. I will continue with how automotive engines and fuels can play a role on engine emission reduction techniques. I want to cover future technological demands. These are the future technological de demands to reduce the emission problems as well as engine performance. First is fuel efficiency. Second is emission reduction. Third is safety and durability of the engines, cost effectiveness, and innovative features. So I will cover some of the innovative features which are required to reduce the emission problems. That is called as advanced engine technologies. First engine technology is a cylinder deactivation. This is very important, cylinder deactivation. Cylinder deactivation saves fuel by turning off some cylinders when they are not needed. This technology turns off some of the engine cylinders when they are not needed. 
it essentially turns up the valves to some cylinders so that fuel and air aren't pumped into them this temporarily runs on eight or six cylinder engines into three to four cylinder engine and saving fuel second advanced engine technology is turbocharging with engine downsizing turbochargers increase engine power this allows manufacturers to use smaller engines without sacrificing performance or performance without fuel economy third technology is gdi called as gasoline direct injection delivers higher performance with lower fuel use fuel is injected directly into the cylinder which makes the fuel air mixture somehow cooler cooler air allows higher compression ratios and or more efficient spark timing this can increase performance as well as lower fuel use fourth technology is wall timing and lift technologies which improve engine efficiency by optimizing the flow of fuel and air into the engine for various engine speeds it includes variable wall actuation variable cam timing cam phasing variable wall timing and lift electronic control and fifth is wall uh, uh, control the flow of fresh air into the cylinders the flow of exhaust out of them when and how long the valves open that is very important for timing and how much the valves move that is called as lift of the valve both are affecting engine efficiency and last and very important is traditional engine designs traditional engine design use fixed timing and lift settings the best timing and lift settings may vary with engine speed so fixed settings are a compromise between the optimum for high and low engine speeds variable wall timing and lift however can alter timing and lift to the optimal setting for the engine speed and power now as i have explained the innovative techniques to reduce the emission powers i can come to the automotive engine emissions development how what is exactly emission any gases solid or liquid materials emitted from the engines are called as engine emissions emissions are broadly class categorized as tail pipe emissions and evaporative emission emissions i will explain both that is tail pipe emissions it is coming out from the exhaust pipe and evaporative emissions is called as when it is when fuel is evaporated by hot atmosphere it is called as evaporative emissions there are two basic methods used to control engine emissions first is the control of the combustion process it is very important i will explain in detail how to control the combustion process and second is the use of after treatment devices in the exhaust system so this is after the engine when the exhaust comes out of the engines and we have to do the treatment on exhaust gases with the help of devices and we can reduce the high emissions problems how this uh, engine emissions form it is called as formation of engine emissions in case of both engines there are two types of engines i will cover both spark ignition engines shortly called as si engines uh, or petrol engine or gasoline engines second engine is ci engines compression ignition engines or diesel engines now the automotive or vehicles powered by ic engines internal combustion engines operating on conventional petroleum fuels natural gas and other liquid fuels emit carbon monoxide co other liquid fuels emit carbon monoxide nitrogen oxide shortly called as nox one burnt hydrocarbons that is sc and particulate matter shortly called as pm 
which are regarded as the primary pollutants carbon dioxide is not a pollutant for the local environment but it being a greenhouse gas its contribution to global warming is causing increasing concern it is estimated that carbon dioxide is responsible for about 50% of the global greenhouse effect emission control legislations were brought in during the late 1960s and early 1970s in the us europe and japan other countries have also followed legislations to curb vehicular air pollutions it is very important to know the sources of engine emissions in the conventional gasoline fuel si engines in addition to exhaust emissions unburned fuel or hydrocarbons all also come from evaporation in the fuel tank fuel system crankcase blow by gases the amount of sulfur in the current engine fuels gasoline and diesel is relatively small less than 500 ppm by mass and is being lowered further uh, below a uh, 50 mm a uh, uh, ppm so therefore emissions of sox sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide from the engines are not significant this is sulfur a sox is very dangerous we will discuss how this sox is uh, polluted air the pollutants emitted depend on engine design operating conditions ambient conditions fuel type and exhaust after treatment so i will cover all these uh, uh, important points uh, first is engine design operating conditions ambient conditions fuel type and exhaust after treatment for the reduction of emissions the formation of exhaust emissions is covered by fuels combustion process and chem its chemistry how it is called as engine pollutants components of tailpipe emissions or evaporative emissions which are considered harmful to humans and the environment are considered to be pollutants all the pollutants are harmful to humans it is uh, very dangerous and environment also all animals plants so and hence it is important to study the regulations of various countries control the acceptable pollutant levels so these pollutant levels are decided by, by the different countries i will explain uh one of the important uh, techniques to reduce the emissions uh, that is called as already i have explained it combustion process control during combustion when the fuel burn will get a lot of pollutants and how to design the engine to reduce the emissions i will cover this point in combustion area that is called as combustion process control the application of technological advances in fuel injectors oxygen sensors and onboard computers to engines has increased the control and subsequent optimization of the engine combustion process combustion process improvements include increased fluid turbulence and fuel mixing in the cylinder these improvements include modification of the intake valve size position and the use of direct fuel injection into the cylinder the use of alternative and oxygenated fuels would be used to reduce emissions exhaust emission from si engines already i have explained i will cover si engine that is called as spark ignitions which runs on gasoline or petrol how this emission developed in the engines uh, it is depending on the air fuel ratio so contents of air in the 
engines, content of the fuel in the engines, it is called as air fuel ratio. Air fuel ratio is one of the essential engine variables that affect exhaust emissions. So later on, I will cover this point because control of air fuel ratio is very important. Second is uh, the SI engine operation. It is the second point for the exhaust emissions. The SI engine operation is preferred near stoichiometric mixtures. It is also called as chemically correct mixture as it provides a smooth engine operation. Next is carbon monoxide, CO, and unburnt hydrocarbon emissions reduce with an increase in the air fuel ratio as more oxygen gets available for combustions. Why we require more oxygen? Because we get a clear exhaust. In the SI engines, overall, several, uh, in the SI engines, several processes contribute to unburnt hydrocarbon emissions. Most of the hydrocarbon emissions result from quenching as it cannot propagate in the air fuel mixture located in cold air regions and narrow passages around the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber is this place where combustion takes place in the engines. Absorption of fuel in lubricating oil film on the cylinder walls. Combustion chamber deposits also contributes to unburned hydrocarbons. Some of the fuel will absorb uh, in the lubricating oil in the cylinder of the engines. And because of that, uh, there is a problem of exhaust emissions. A, uh, hydrocarbon emission is dependent on many in mechanism such as ad adsorption and desorption, desorption of fuel in oil layer, flame quenching, fuel exceeding into crevices and accumulation of fuel in engine deposits, etc. Main sources of hydrocarbon emissions in four-stroke homogeneous charge SI engines are these are the main sources of hydrocarbon emissions. I will ex explain one by one in my lecture. Flame quenching on the cylinder walls, absorption and desorption in oil film on cylinder walls, carbon deposits in the chamber. Because the carbon is uh, the main content of the fuel, carbon and hydrogen, that's why it is called as hydrocarbon fuels. During burning, carbon may be deposited in the chamber that creates emissions. Uh, misfired combustion or bulk gas quenching, liquid fuel in the cylinder, exhaust wall leakages, crankies, low by gases. So there is another engine called as compression ignition engine, shortly called as CI engines, and it is popularly known as diesel engines which use diesel fuel. In the CI engines, a fuel is injected into the hot compressed air inside the cylinder towards the end of the compression stroke. The quantity of injected fuel is varied to control engine power output while the air quantity per cycle remains nearly constant. The mixing of fuel and air is governed by injection, air motion, and turbulence parameters. So these parameters are very important for design. First is injection of fuel, air motion inside the cylinder, turbulence created inside the combustion chamber. So we'll discuss later on how these are responsible for reduction in emissions. The status of fuel distribution in the engine cylinder at a given instant in the engine cycle varies with engine load, speed, and other operating parameters. It is also depending on engine load. It is also depending on engine speed. It is also depending on other operating parameters. What is exactly other parameters? That is uh, combustion in diesel engines. Combustion is another parameter. Combustion in diesel engine is a complex heterogeneous process, mixture formation and combustion are controlled by interaction between several parameters 
such as the injection spray, air motion, and combustion chamber geometry. Whenever we want to design diesel engine, these are very important parameters. That is injection spray, air motion, combustion chamber geometry. So we'll discuss later on all these three. Exhaust emissions from CI engines, the formation of pollutants is strongly influenced by the local air fuel ratio, which varies with time during combustion. NOx is formed in the high temperature frame lesions. NOx is not generated by the fuel. NOx is generated by the high temperature more than 1500 degrees centigrade. Air contains nitrogen and oxygen. Uh, at high temperature, oxygen will combine with hydrogen and forming NOx, which is dangerous or harmful to the humans. And hence, we have to control high temperature frame lesions. So we'll discuss later on how to control high temperature frame lesions. Soot formation. A soot is a very dangerous. Soot is a solid particles. Soot formation occurs in fuel over reach core of the injection spray which is subjected to high temperature and pressures during the cycle. Now, another problem is generation of unburnt hydrocarbons in the CI engines or diesel engines. Diesel fuel contains hydrocarbons of higher boiling point and molecular weight than gasoline. Because petrol is very lighter and it is very volatile, than the diesel. In diesel engines, many events such as liquid fuel injection, fuel evaporation, fuel air mixing, combustion, and mixing of burnt and unburnt gases can occur simultaneously. Diesel combustion being heterogeneous, several processes are likely to contribute to unburnt hydrocarbon emissions. So regarding diesel engines, uh, we will discuss about some of the important points to reduce the emissions, how to design engine, and what are the operating parameters or variables for engine designs. We will consider here the principal engine design variables affecting SI engine emissions include compression ratio, spark timing, swirl, wall overlap, and charge stratification. The engine operating variables influencing emissions are equivalence ratio, dilution by trapped residual gases, EGR, EGR is called as exhaust gas recirculation, speed, and load. I will discuss all these uh, important operating engine variables equivalence ratio, dilution by the trapped residual gases, EGR, speed, and load. Exhaust gas recirculation is very important to control the emission problems. With exhaust gas recirculation, some fraction of the exhaust gas is routed back into the intake manifold. The non-reacting exhaust gas acts as a dilutant in the air fuel mixture, lowering the combustion temperature and the NOx formation. The dilution of exhaust gas release, dilution of exhaust gas recirculation of the mixture also reduces the combustion rate. So the spark timing is usually advanced to maintain optimum thermal efficiency. The EGR fraction increases with engine load up to the lean limit, about 15 to 20 percent of the fuel air flow rate. I will come to the very important parameter that is called as equivalence ratio. So this equivalence ratio is the ratio of two quantities, actual air, fish, air fuel ratio used and theoretical air fuel ratio used. And hence, According to this equivalence ratio, there is a formation of emissions. The first is 
carbon monoxide that is co primarily a function of oxygen availability is reduced as the mixture is lean co emissions are reduced to very low values as the mixture is lean to equivalence ratio equal to 0.9 to 0.95 that is air fuel ratio is increased above the stoichiometric value by 5 to 10 percent we'll come to the uh, next uh, parameter that is called as engine design parameter compression ratio compression ratio is called as geometric parameter it depends on the dimension of the engine and according to this jump compression ratio what is the compression ratio suitable for petrol engine that is 7 to 12 normally it is 9 in case of diesel engine it is 16 to 21 majority of the engines are designed for 18 compression ratio so what are the problems with higher compression ratio what are the advantages what are the disadvantages we will discuss how it is related to the emission problems using a higher compression ratio increases burn gas temperature if compression ratio is more that gives more uh, gas temperature and because of that higher gas temperature there is a formation of nox in the engines however as engine efficiency increases with an increase in compression ratio brake specific nox emission decreases the engine compression ratio has an unfavorable effect on nox and hydrocarbon emissions what will happen if we have a lower compression ratio a lower compression ratio is expected to result in reduction of hydrocarbon emissions due to decrease in surface volume ratio of the combustion chamber and proportionately lower revised volume reduction in engine compression ratio results in higher exhaust gas temperature which promote oxidation of carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbons in the exhaust system another advantage of low compression ratio is the lowering of the peak combustion temperatures resulting in reduction of nox formation the higher compression ratio results in in cylinder pressure higher heat release rate and lower ignition delay the higher pressure and temperature nox and carbon dioxide emissions increase at higher compression ratio on the other hand the specific particular matters emission smoke opacity are less at higher compression ratios another important parameter is ignition timing ignition timing what is exactly ignition timing where the fuel starts burns that is before the third stroke of the engines and hence selecting correct ignition timing is very important the ignition timing is normally set to mbt minimum for best torque to obtain the best engine performance ignition timing strongly influences influences nox formation due to its effect on unburnt gas temperatures and the time available for nox kinetics while gas temperature are still high ignition timing retards the spark uh, retards the spark timing lowers the nox since greater fraction of the combustion occurs in an expanding volume lowering the peak cylinder pressure and temperature however this also decreases the engine thermal efficiency that is the problem and hence we have to find out the correct ignition timing 
now come to the another emission problems that is the diesel smoke this diesel smoke is very dangerous for human being and all factors that affect soot formation and oxidation also influence smoke smoke emission increase with an increase in engine load due to richer air fuel ratios longer duration of diffusion combustion phase and reduce oxygen concentration engine power rating and maximum brake mean effective pressure is limited by the permissible smoke emissions poor control of fuel injection rate during acceleration also increases smoke exhaust gas is recirculation reduces combustion temperatures and oxygen concentration in the burned gases the net effect of egr is reduction in oxidation of soot and increase in smoke smoke emissions can be reduced by accelerating diffusion combustions there are two types of combustions one is premixed combustion and diffusion combustions generally in the engines we have a diffusion combustions and because of accelerating diffusion combustions smoke emissions can be reduced the combustion rates is very important and these combustion rates are increased by promoting rapid fuel air mixing through use of high swirl rates by increasing injection rate and improving fuel atomization and now we come to the uh, engine control technology i have explained up till now how the engine emissions are formed in the engines now i will explain how these emissions controlled and what are the devices we used what are the technologies we are finding the emission control techniques can be broadly grouped that addresses engine design parameters there are total 16 engine design parameters one is called as thermodynamic parameters second is called as geometric parameters i will cover all parameters engine adds on to enable reduction in the formation or burning of pollutants inside the engine of operational factors exhaust after treatment what is this exhaust after treatment it is called because when the emissions come out from the engine in the tail pipe or in exhaust manifold it is called as exhaust treatment because we are doing treatment on the exhaust gases outside the engine and hence uh, uh, according to this uh, i will i want to explain some of the important si engine design parameters that affects on engine emissions and how change for control of emissions first is compression ratio already i have uh, given idea of about compression ratio combustion chamber size and shape device volume fuel system spark timing multi hall and variable hall actuation engine downsizing variable swept volume and supercharging these are responsible for all and hence i want to explain what are the technology changes in the present engines and that is called as technology change there are different technology changes in petrol engines and in diesel engines nowadays in india also uh, we are using bs6 engines and 
in bs6 engines there are lot of modifications of the engines and why these modifications are required to reduce the emission of co carbon monoxide which is very harmful to human being and when we are using bs6 technology in the engines the carbon monoxide is reduced by 30% and nox is reduced by 80% bs6 in norms also set limits for unburnt hydrocarbons pm emissions which were not specified in earlier norms to meet the emission requirements of bs6 the carburetor in petrol engines need to be replaced by program a fuel injectors the exhaust system would be fitted with three way catalytic converters to reduce the tailpipe emissions further the norms also mandate on on board diagnostic system which is shortly called as obd for all bs6 engines so exactly i want to explain what is exactly three way catalytic converter various exhaust after treatment devices have been added to vehicles to meet emission requirements these include catalytic converters nox traps particulate filters currently the most important after treatment device is the three way heterogeneous catalyst invented in 1950 by hondri the name of the scientist that is hondri and he uh, first installed on the exhaust system in passenger cars in 1975 it derives its name from its work on all three gaseous pollutants concerns what is the exactly way of controlling three way catalytic converter he is controlling of carbon monoxide controlling of hydrocarbons and controlling of nox because of time limit i will not able to explain each and every please excuse me because it is very complicated processes i want to introduce all these mechanisms to you another is that all catalytic converters are built in a porous honeycomb or pellet geometry to expose the exhaust gases to a larger surface made of tiny particles tiny particles less than generally uh, 15 nanometers of one or more, one or more of the noble metals called as platinum palladium rhodium these are the <coughs> three elements we are using to control the emissions first is platinum palladium rhodium platinum is the principal metal used to remove hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide and rhodium is primary metal used to remove nox i want to explain uh, some of the technology changes in diesel engines till now i have explained for a si engine that is petrol engines now i want to explain for diesel engines as per bs6 norms nox emissions from a diesel engines are to be reduced by 70% and particulate matters by 80% this is the very good advantage of bs6 norms engines reduction of nox and particulate matters to achieve this the engine must be equipped with euro 6 compliant technologies we have some technological changes in diesel engines particularly in bs6 norms so i want to discuss about technological changes in diesel engines we have to add some 
devices in the diesel engines first is diesel a fitting diesel pre filter it is also called as diesel particulate filter shortly called as dpf in the exhaust system using selective catalytic reduction scr or exhaust gas recircular re, uh, recirculation ecr techniques to reduce nox in emissions and an on board diagnostic obd system required to monitor the man functioning of parts related to emissions Uh, i want to explain because nox is very dangerous and hence i want to explain more about nox reduction in diesel engines there are two methods of nox reduction first is in cylinder reduction second is after treatment so what is exactly in cylinder reduction it is inside the cylinder in the engines second is outside the engine that is called as after treatment i want to discuss about in cylinder reduction there are four methods of reduction methods and we have to make some changes in the engine designs number one techniques is combustion system optimization we have to optimize combustion system second is fuel injection system optimization third is variable geometry turbo charging we are using turbocharger in the diesel engines and according to the rpm it should be uh, variable uh, geometry uh, turbochargers we are using for different different speed engines fourth technique we are using that is the egr technique inside the cylinder uh, inside the cylinder now how these uh, parameters are helpful for design diesel engine design parameters because we have to design the engines according to above the uh, systems so uh, there are three important parameters for diesel engines combustion first is fuel injection spray behavior fuel injection spray behavior is very important when the fuel is injected the fuel is converted into fuel spray i will not able to explain here fuel spray in detail and second is in cylinder air flow we require the a uh, flow of air inside the cylinder to form the correct mixing of the air and fuel third design parameter is combustion chamber geometry so we have to decide the diameters for the combustion chamber then a length of the combustion chamber geometry now i will come to the after treatment after treatment that is when the exhaust comes outside the engine we are do doing some treatment on it and according to that we are using some of the devices first is called as selective catalytic catalytic reduction scr second device we are using it is nox storage reduction nsr catalyst and uh, i want to explain in details about exhaust after after treatment in diesel engines uh, exhaust after treatment in diesel engines include scr nox storage reduction nsr catalyst dpf and continuously regenerating trap it is called as crt second is after treatment devices for diesel engines are divided into two groups one is diesel catalyst second is dpf diesel engine catalyst again divided into two groups one is oxidation catalyst second is lean denox catalyst design of after treatment devices depends on the gas compositions that is exhaust gas compositions because uh, uh, we have to find out what are the exhaust composition what are the exhaust composition that is co co2 nox sulfur dioxide sox like that 
and the engine duty cycle. A diesel engine particular filter is very important. Diesel DPF, uh, DPF is a device designed to remove diesel particular matter or soot from the exhaust gas of diesel engine. DPF is designed for requirements like fine filtration, minimum pressure drop, low cost device, mass production suitability, and product durability. Uh, second is SCR. SCR is very important. It is an advanced active emission control technology system that reduces tailpipe emissions of NOx down to near zero levels in new generation diesel powered vehicles and equipments. SCR is a means of converting NOx with the aid of catalyst into diatomic nitrogen that is called as N2 and water. And this SCR is converted NOx into nitrogen and water vapors. So a re reductant, typically anhydrous ammonia, aqueous ammonia or urea solution is added to a stream of exhaust gas and is reacted to a catalyst as the reaction drives towards completion nitrogen and carbon dioxides are produced in case of urea use now next is the ezr ezr is an emission control technology allowing significant nos emission reductions from most diesel engines from light duty emissions through medium and heavy duty engine applications to low speed to slope marine engines and uh, i want to explain about onboard diagnostic techniques shortly called as obd systems it provide self diagnostic functionality incorporated into the engine control system to alert the vehicle driver or operator about potential problems that can affect the vehicle emissions performance. Light duty and heavy duty regulations define some general requirements for the malfunction of indicator light. It is called, it is called as MIL. So these are the uh, recu recu equipments we require in the OPD. First is malfunction indicator light. It is shortly called as MIL. Trouble codes we are using monitoring systems we are using, resource systems we are using, standardized communications common to all OBD systems. Now I want to explain the overview of optimization on different uh, segments. So this is the techniques uh, we are using. Uh, uh, just, just, you, just you define difference between BS6 engines and BS four engines. So this figure is available to you in front of you. Already I have explained the details of all devices which are controlling emissions. I will not explain in detail because I have explained in detail. Now uh, this is the uh, BS6 engines. It has so many components and hence engine design becomes more complicated. Uh, this is a different view of engine. And I will come to the overview of optimization on different segments. What is the other effects of uh, vehicle designs? Non-powertrain enhancement. Instead of engines, uh, if you design vehicle properly, you can also reduce the emissions. So that is called as non-powertrain enhancement. So these are the non-powertrain enhancement techniques, aerodynamics optimizations, weight reduction of the vehicle, braking system optimization, tire resistance reduction. This tire resistance reduction is also called as ruling resistance of the tire. Accessories we are using in the engines, in the vehicles and loads optimizations. Start stop systems. So the uh, weight reduction uh, opti aerodynamics optimization is very important. So uh, the cars can be designed, passengers car can be designed in such a way that 
uh, there may be very less air resistance on the moving cars as uh, we have a very less resistance on the car surfaces there should be a lesser fuel use and uh, therefore emission generation is very less second is uh, weight reduction we have to design the weight uh, very less the engine design the weight reduction in engine and weight reduction of the vehicle and it is very important how to reduce the weight of the vehicle and hence manufacturers are reducing weight by designing vehicles to use less material in the vehicle using lightweight materials and downsizing the power train weight can be reduced without reducing vehicle size safety and riding comfort now this third is very uh, fourth uh, uh, braking system optimizations so when you are applying uh, uh, braking system so many times the fuel consumption is more whenever there is a more fuel consumption again emission is problem next is a, a tire resistance reduction that means we have to reduce the rolling resistance on the tires there are some uh, reasons of uh, increasing in rolling resistance because of the tire design because of the deformation of the tires because of the load of the vehicle because of load of the vehicle tire will deform and uh, a vehicle speed will reduce and we require the more fuel consumption and hence because of the tire deformation we require more fuel and hence there is a energy loss and this energy loss is very dangerous for generating emissions and hence manufacturer will take care of it manufacturers of tire will take care of tire shape tire materials tire uh, tread design and hence they can reduce rolling resistance and improve a uh, fuel economy now uh, start stop system is very important nowadays uh, we have to design engine in such a way that engine can be stopped automatically engine can be start automatically it is also called as ideal stop or smart start engines these engine stops then engine will stop when the car comes to a stop and automatic automatically restart it to resume driving this reduces wasted fuel from idling during idling when the vehicle is stopped and engine is running that is called as idling and during idling more fuel is wasting and we can save the fuel this system automatically turn the engine off when the vehicle stops and restart it simultaneously when the brake is released or the accelerator is pressed this reduces fuel wasted during idling second is a uh, very important efficiency enhancement of conventional power train so we are using some of the power train means whenever there is a power generation from the engine it is transmitted to the uh, vehicle tires and hence we have to improve the system in proper way you have to design the vehicle in proper way so that we can save the fuel to reduce the emission problems first is uh, we have to use advanced injection technologies to reduce the emission problems variable hall control designs downsizing with turbocharging reduce friction losses because when you are using number of components in the engines and vehicles there is a friction losses and because of friction losses fuels can be wasted transmission optimizations scr using coolant dgr now uh, for this use of cleaner fuels nowadays we are using conventional fuels like biodiesel or diesel and petrols that are producing lot of emission problems if you are using very cleaner fuels like alternative fuels biodiesel ethanol methanol cng lpg hydrogen low sulfur gasoline or diesel and we can reduce the emission problems next is the use of greener powertrain technologies what is mean by greener powertrain technologies 
uh, whenever particularly in metro cities uh, whenever vehicle speed is very less we are reducing emissions in the metro cities uh, there is a crowd of vehicles in the cities and that area is having lot of polluted area and hence we have to use hybrid electric vehicles what is meant by hybrid electric vehicles it has conventional uh, fuel engines as well as it has electric vehicles particularly electric vehicles may be used in the cities and uh, combustion engines may be used uh, outside the cities second option is completely electrical vehicles now the uh, it is the worldwide scenario we are developing all the vehicles converting into the electric vehicles next choice is the fuel cells shall i stop madam or continue hello uh, yes i hear you dr sudhakar so yes. how much do you have uh, to finish uh, I, i will take 5 minutes okay you you will you can finish then okay okay time 5 minutes yes okay so i will come to the uh, use of conventional fuels and quality of fuels uh, during design of engines because of the fuels many times we are using the wrong fuels because of wrong fuels a lot of emissions problems and hence we have to concentrate on fuel qualities and hence fuel quality plays a very important role in meeting the stringent emission regulations the petrol and diesel fuel specifications have been aligned with the corresponding european fuel specifications for meeting the euro 2 euro 3 euro 4 emission and euro 5 euro 6 emission norms ps ps 4 grade fuel was introduced in 2010 and is available in 39 cities as reported in 2016 the rest of the country has to make do with bs3 fuel using alternative fuels has been promoted in india for energy security and emission reductions particularly in india uh, we have uh, two metro cities creating lot of pollutions one is delhi and second is mumbai have more than 2 lakhs uh, commercial vehicles running on cng fuels all the vehicles are converted um, into cng fuel uh, that is the one of the advantage in delhi and mumbai delhi has the most significant number of cng commercial vehicles running worldwide india is planning to introduce biodiesel ethanol petrol blends in phased manner and has drawn a road map for the same the indian auto industry is working with the authorities to facilitate the introduction of alternative fuels india has also set up task force for preparing hydrogen road map the use of lpg has also been introduced as auto fuel and the oil industry has drawn up plans for city cup auto lpg dispensing stations in major cities automotive emission control is undoubtedly one of the success stories of our profession environmental regulations have become more stringent so called zero emission vehicles as an ultimate goal of indian scenario it was not sufficient to limit progress to the ic engine front to meet the challenges alone it soon appeared that catalytic oxidation of the non combust not combusted hydrocarbon is the first function carbon monoxide is the second function as well as reduction of nox is the third function was required so the three way catalytic converter was born because of three, these reasons for meet lot of other technologies evolved the most common being nox storage and reduction catalyst and selective catalytic reduction catalyst both the lean nox removal diesel oxidation catalyst for lean carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon removal and coated diesel particular filters for soot removal or combinations of these so thank you very much for listening my lecture carefully thank you very much